What's up, everybody? This is your boy, Chris Hubbard. Hey, and it's your boy, AG. And this is Brotherhood, the Unveiling, the podcast. Welcome to our safe space. It's another one. We got another great one on the way. We got another one, bro. You know why? What's that? We got a special friend of ours, bro. We do. We do. We, we do. A very special friend. A very, very special friend. You know why? UAB bound, you know? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And you I think know. it's good to follow up because, you know, last week we had a great show with our brother, Mark Harrison. Right. Right. Man, it got, it got deep. Deep ain't no question, bro. Deep I, no question. I, 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 I had an emotional response last week. You know what I mean? I, I, some of that tough stuff we was talking about. But it was it was a weight lifted. It was, it was amazing. Hey, with further ado, man, we got our boy, man, uh, someone that's, that means a lot to us, man. We went to UAB together, me and AG. That's and my roommate. Bring our guy in, man. His name is Kenor Beckman. Hey, what's what happening, you, brother? <laughs> yes, sir. Dude. Man, how are y'all doing, man? What's up? Man, we good, man. How are you, man? Thank you for being on the podcast, brother. Man, thank you, man. It's a blessing. Like For you sure. said, man, this, this, this is my roommate, man. This <laughs> my boy, this my boy C Hub, man. Left tackle, man. Right tackle, man. Just holding it down, man. Like it's it's a blessing, bro. I appreciate y'all for having me. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Bro, we, we enjoy you, bro. Like, you know, man. We just want to know about you, bro. Who who is Kanar Batman? Uh who is K Back, man? I mean, a lot of people may not know i mean i'm from atlanta honestly uh just from atlanta man grew up playing basketball man started playing some football man my uh, sophomore year in high school came to uab and that's where i got to meet you guys man three coaches staffs we ended up going and uh getting uh bowl eligible y'all know what happened with the program or whatnot huge blessing man got the got a call man on draft day went up to green bay you know a lot of memories, a lot of stuff I could like kind of talk about, man, but ended up outside of that, you know, always kept them Clippers with me. You know, I think that's really what we want to kind of talk about too, man. I kind of kept them Clippers with me, uh, you know, after that, you know, ended up going back, getting that degree, you know what I mean? So got that degree and, you know, since then, I, uh, right now, man, just working in, uh, you know, cybersecurity, man, like got my nonprofit, man, Innovation Pro. So I'm still with the kids, man. like. So, you know, still cutting hair, man. So, like, I'm, I'm still trying to push, you know what I mean? Y'all know that, you know, yeah. every time I talk to y'all, y'all know what we talk about, just trying to push forward, man. Just just trying to really do 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 what we were called to do. Uh, man. So, man, let's dive into it, man. You said something powerful, and I don't think people realize what happened. And it was after my graduation, um, the program ended. Mentally, what did that do to you? You went through three coaching staffs while you were in college. That's a mental thing. So speak on that. And then speak on how just the program abruptly ends and everybody's kind of career is in limbo. I think when you really break it down and when you really get to the core essence, you know what I mean, of why you play football, you know what I mean? I would, I would hope to say a large majority is it's really that brotherhood, you know what I mean? Absolutely. And it's the, it's the relationship. So, I mean, I think that's something that really stood out Cause that's all we had, right. <laughs> you know what I mean? At, at that sure. point, you know what I mean? Like, so, you know, everybody was coming, like, you know, taking certain players or trying to at least. And it, you know, it, for, for me, you know what I mean? It, I, I, I kind of didn't get the, the full, uh, spectrum, I guess, because I, I that was my final year, right. but just from being tied to it, you know, with, with Waldo and just with Tevin and just a few people, man, and just seeing that, and really being able to see their careers, man, it, and seeing where it's going now, man, like, you know, I, it, it's kind of full circle now, you know what I mean? But definitely, sure. man, going through it, man, I, it, it, a lot of emotions, man, a lot of emotions. But I think the brotherhood is really what what stood out, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, you you really want something to call back on home. And, like, when, when everybody else talking about their school, you're like, man, I wonder what UAB doing today, but, man, we ain't playing you know what I'm saying? Like, so it just, that hit home, bro, like, for, for a lot of us, man. Like, really, like, love UAB, thick and thin, like, nothing. You know what I'm saying? Like, we all gonna ride for each other, man. So, that's real, bro. Man, you really get, it's something, it's something about when you grind through with somebody, you know what I mean? 
And, you know, I think a lot of us even took it a step further and not and took it off the field too. Not only when you grind with somebody, but then when you take it off the field and you get to know that person on another level. You know what I mean? Like now at this point, I mean, shoot, Chris, I'll be cutting your hair. You know what I'm saying, man? AG, you know what I mean? We we done talked about all, all the phil- uh, philanthropic stuff we trying to do with our nonprofit, sure. man. Like I mean, yeah. it's and you get to see it in, in time. You know what I mean? I guess they say that time to tell stuff, man. So I guess now, man, we not old, man, but it it, it is kind of beautiful to see kind of the maturation. You know what I mean? Of the process of just us in general, though, man. So man. for yeah. sure, you talked about going to Green Bay. Um, what was that process like? Like people don't realize, like UAB is D one. But we got treated like D two. You know, I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but we got treated like we wasn't D one. Oftentimes, I remember times where people was like, "Oh yeah, like Alabama." Like you talking about the Alabama? Like, nah, we like the 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 brother sister school. So, yeah. tell about the process of like getting going to the NFL from a smaller Division one. Man, I, I I remember, man, just one on the plane man not even knowing where green bay really was you know what yeah. i'm saying like they sure. weren't they weren't necessarily the team that i thought that i was even gonna uh go to so you know what i mean even just getting up there man you're talking about a hall of fame organization you know what i'm saying so you know the city owns the team you know what i mean so just imagine that from you know legion sometimes we we might get we can't even get 15 20 000 at times you know what i'm saying and right. there you know just you know the game's been sold out for the past 40 years you know what mm-hmm. i'm saying so it, just being able to have that you know what i'm saying environment you know being able to play you know what i mean obviously with you know a hall of fame quarterback you know the facilities man like and just the people man it it, it, was, it was a blessing man i'll be lying i'll be lying if, if i say it wasn't so yeah. You know, I still kind of got, you know, the best part I kind of liked about it, too, was, you know, I kind of got to keep that same colors. You know what I'm saying? A little sure. bit. It just, you True. know, it kind of it kind of felt good. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Got to got to do a Lambo leap. So, you know, it, you know, it, <laughs> it, it's cool. Hey, but now I ain't going to lie to you, boy. It's cold now. <laughs> hey, <laughs> so. hey, 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 it's cold now. I ain't going to yeah. lie to you now. I'm talking. Man, heated heated benches, all that, man. We need all that. You know what man. I'm saying? I just want to know, like, how has the NFL impacted you as and mental health? After I honestly, after I left the league, you know what I'm saying, man, once I, I truly call it, well, it wasn't even at that point, I probably hadn't even really called it uh quits, man. Just really I took six months, man, just to myself, man, going through that transitional period. I did take uh, some of the uh, NFL. Um, NFL has some of the uh, some resources that I uh, extend that they extended. I took that, but really more so, I just took some time to myself, man, and really just decided, you know, who I was and what value I had. You know what I mean? As Kennard Backman, you know what I mean? And what what I brought to it, you know what I mean? What I felt like I brought to life, you know what I mean? What value add I feel like I had to life, and just you know, delving out why I even play football, you know what I mean? And just really answering those hard questions that, you know, we just give generic responses for it. That's the sure. like said to tap yeah. into the resources because a lot of a lot of us really don't tap into those resources that we have around us, bro. That's really deep that you said that. Mental health wise. So this is a mental health podcast and we talk about, you know, how all of our mental health kind of sometimes it dictates like where we go in life unfortunately and in some instances right so have you had any instances where like mental health has impacted like your romantic relationships and how i go back to that word grace man i think just like understanding man that everything that you're expecting you know what i mean especially like in your you know in your romantic life man like everything that you you're not perfect. You know what right. I mean? So I right. guess let me just say that, you know what I mean? You're not perfect. So to expect someone to be everything, you know what I mean? That you, that you are or that you're, that you want them to be one without you communicating it to them is, you know, impossible. And well, then absolutely. even when communicated, it's still impossible for someone to be perfect. You know yeah. what I mean? So, just being able to take grace, man, and, and 
and step by step, like, you know, just trying to get the promote the best that you can get out of someone. But at the end of the day, people's strengths are their strengths and their weaknesses are their weaknesses. You know what I mean? So absolutely just being able to cultivate, you know, mechanisms around that games or you know just just be just just little stuff like that you know what i mean i think but just leading with grace is probably in loving with grace you know what i mean i think that's really probably truly you know i mean that's truly love you know what i mean when you yeah me so I, i'll probably say that like being in, in a relationship um you know like we, we stated before now that you see that those mental shifts you know, and things going on. Can you see yourself freely like communicating with your with your significant other? <laughs> hey, y'all boys. Hey, yeah, man. So, nah, I, I like this. I like this, man. This is this is this is stuff. You know what I mean? Uh, that I'm working on. It is. Uh, it is difficult at times. I'm not gonna lie to you. Um, honestly say honestly like saying it out loud honestly before you know what i mean before i say it is stuff that's been helping me and it's it's so i don't come up so just so it doesn't because you know i want to come off as 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 aggressive not as aggressive you know what i'm saying right and listening to i think you know what i mean with an with the third ear you know what i'm saying and, and listening to you know understand and not to respond you know what I mean? It helps with that with that grace when you're trying to. That's not more to call it a but rebuttal, but when you're making your next statement, you know what I mean as far yeah. as to communicate. And I think I think that's important, man. Because I man, I could just remember, man. I, I I used to listen to respond too much mm-hmm. instead of listening to accept or listening to understand. I think I used to listen just to give you something back. Like I don't like being wrong. So let me fire this back because I it, it kind of turned into like a shoving match. Like, yeah, you said what you said, but I'm gonna get this out because I need to say it. When really I could be mad, I could be wrong as hell, and and I'm just I'm just trying to be right too much instead of listening to understand. Uh, and I think now I had to take this course called emotional CPR, and what the course was originally for it was for you to help people. So it, it's to take advice, stop giving advice. And what they say is. Is if you ask questions to the person that's seeking advice, they can find the answer themselves. And so now that 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 course changed my life because now when I'm in my relationship, I can talk and ask questions so that I'm further able to understand where you're coming from or where it started. That way, when it is time for me to respond, I'm not responding out of just being like annoyed. You know what I'm saying? I'm more or less responding out of okay, now I understand where they came from. This is how I feel. And then eventually we end up understanding each other and it, and it makes it so much better when we can understand where each other come from. We don't actually have to agree on nothing, but at least we know kind of where our stances are and then we can work through anything else. Yeah, no, I agree. I think like you said, being able to block out that that noise and and being able to channel the intent you know what i mean absolutely it, it, it is really it you know what i mean i deal with that you know you know my mom my mom my mom would be yelling my mom was a yeller. yeah so, mine too <laughs> and my mom used to you know used to come in the house and and so and now and you and i used to wonder like why why like what is she yeah. saying yeah. And I really started to understand that, you know, that really getting deeper into it, like she didn't like her job and her job, she was bringing it, you know what I mean, back into her personal, you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Yeah. And we were catching a lot of that, you know what yeah. I mean? And, that, and it got better, you know what I'm saying? Like, as I was able, and this is something like, uh, I, it got better, you know what I'm saying? As, as, as we honestly communicated that to her, and uh yeah man it's just it's just a good thing to be able to uh knock out that noise and being able to get to that you know get to that intent because then i think the next levels is kind of what we're doing now is now being able to build conversations off of that and now you're now you're getting into now you're getting into that to that groove and into that into into different uh you know different branches for sure yeah hey quick hey are are y'all riders because I mean, I don't know how much like 
I, y'all support, you know what I mean? Like writing journal or anything like that. But you know what I mean? That's, that's something that I support. So Literally, bro. Get to bro, it, bro. Does. Oh yeah. 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 I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I already, yeah. I don't even, yeah, for sure. Yeah. You know, if you can write down, you know, what your day was like, or just something that you learned throughout the day, write it down, write down the date that you did at the time. And then you'll go, you can go back constantly and reflect on what, positive that you did in your life you know what i'm saying so those are some of the things that we can all just jot down it don't take that long you don't even have to write a whole paragraph or you can write a sentence like i did this that's and, and the third like and that'd be that'd be your thing that'd be your thing i think that was a major moment and i just want to take the time to say we got two black men on a podcast telling the world to journal black men journal your day bro like that that's what this is for it's a safe space so if that's stuff that helps y'all go through your day, and I'm about to, I, I'm on it. I'm about to order a journal. I got one. I just ain't even using it really. Uh, my days be running into each other and all that nonsense. But I need to take some time and journal, bro, because that's that's real. Like putting my putting my day on paper, and then you can go back and and and, and tweak it or whatever you need to do for the next day. For sure. Damn, yeah. that's real. I mean, I got one, man. I was I was sitting here thinking, man, and so. It's crazy because I think every athlete goes through this moment in life. So after you left the league, right, um, and, you know, you had that time to yourself and you had that time to reflect. For me, when that happened, when I didn't get picked, when I didn't get another call from the coach, I went through this depression period because I didn't have a second option. With you, you had, you know, you had them Clippers with you the whole time. You was a bad boy since I met you with the Clippers. What was it a was it an easy transition to realize like you know these clippers is gone is gonna be it for me you know what i mean because they've been it's been it it's been consistent was it like uh where did you battle with you know going ahead and just going full-fledged with you know cutting full-time or 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 what happened after you know that transition period uh man nah i'll probably say man the, the fact that i really kept the clippers just as a it, it was always a passion like from an art aspect you know what I mean? And sure. I just kind of did, you know what I mean? That 1% rule, just like football. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I mean? Just doing an extra gas every day. You know what I'm saying? Or just that 1%, you know, every day. And I just kind of kept that, you know what I mean? Even with my craft. And I never, I never put them down. You know what I mean? I always looked at it as a craft, you know what I mean? And not necessarily uh, a, a a business i looked at it as a craft you know and i thought that you know whenever you you build have crafts you can build value you know what i mean so just between that and then you know even kind of building off of what we talked about ag and i think you know even when you talked about writing this journal now you know what i mean it's, a, it's the one percent rule just like that you know what i mean where sure. you building off of what you writing down each day like c hub was saying like you know what i mean y'all just writing down one sentence each day and just it just it just somehow you know what i mean it just built so yeah. um that's kind of how the, the clippers were to me and i just that's probably something that uh i really just put a lot of faith in and it just it just somehow you know what i mean and y'all know it's still with me y'all know you know what i mean I, I i still service clients now so still trying to expand it you know what i mean now yeah. that's kind of where i'm at now just trying to expand my knowledge within the hair industry before i even think about trying to move any further like mental health, we talk about mental health, and it's and this is what you know we got excited about too because I don't think people realize a black man's therapy when we fear therapy is the barbershop. Mm. Think about it, you know what I mean? That's where you go Saturday mornings, you talking about any and everything, you learning. You might, I know back in the day when I was going, it was OGs in up there, they playing chess, the, you know, the vibe, it's a different vibe, and so for black men who fear therapy. It starts, we don't even realize we've been doing therapy since we came up. You can right. tell, you know, barbers can feel your energy. If you come in there with something wrong, you know you can talk to the to your barber. That's your guy. And then once you leave that chair, number one, you feel better internally. Yeah. Well, number two, you look better. So now you're about to attack the world. Right. So it's it's a it's a it's a, it's a it's a it's a it's a huge, it's a big deal whether people know it or not. For me, it's more of that time, like you said, that we're spending with with each other. You know Absolutely. what I'm saying, and and being able to get to know people on a deeper level. You know what I mean. The cut is the icing on the cake. Uh, you right. know what I mean. I guess I kind of would look at it more like that, because for me, I was closer with my barber 
than I was with my parents at a certain point. Like mm-hmm. my barber knew I had a girlfriend before before my parents did, you yeah. know what I mean? And, you know, just that relationship. And I think that might be where some of that old school, you know what I mean? Some of that old school mentality kind of that I might, you know what I mean, kind of, you know, spring out or not, you know what I mean? It just comes from kind of some of that barbershop stuff, like just from being a kid and just, just some of those talks and, you know, even down to, even down to valuing, you know what I mean? Like your, your clientele and your value. And, you know, when somebody come in a shop, you know what I'm saying? How do they know that, you know what I mean? That's your client or not, you know what I mean? And it's That's just sure. more so on, 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 on the value that you bring and the way you operate your businesses. It, 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 so I, I saw business, I saw the relationships, like, you know, they definitely going to talk sports, you know what I mean? But as far as when you start talking, like some of the talks that we're talking about, it's in the barbershop, you know what Absolutely. I mean? I like that, you know what I mean? See hub that you, you, you're taking it to another platform and another dynamic level. So yeah, bro, that, that, that's, that's exactly what, you know what I mean? The barbershop is to me, man, is, is this, you know what I mean? The cut is the icing. For sure. For that sure. Is, you said it yourself, bro. I, Cause I know when I hey, when I get out there tough for you, bro, I'm like feel like a whole new person, bro. A lot of the weight has been lifted, you know what I'm saying? And hey, man, before we let you go, man, we gotta we gotta ask you this tough question. It's always the one to get people to, all right? It's the last one, man. In three words, describe how society typically views black men. How are those ideas detrimental to black men in their mental health? Undervalued, um, aggressive, um, synonymous. Mm. Mm-hmm. And undervalued, why is that detrimental? I definitely say uh, because it creates a crab it feeds into the crab in a barrel mentality where you feel like you only value that you have or the only chance that you have is to pull someone else down you know Mm. the only way you know um and not understanding you know that we have we have like we have money we we have had money are we have had profitable societies we have we have been self-sufficient um i'd say aggressive just in the way that we move um i'd say that now we fight aggression with when you hear aggression now you feel like you have to fight aggression with aggression Mm -hmm. and not understanding you know, and and just that that misconception, it just it just it just it fuels into more aggression, and not and right. making us think that we're not capable of, of 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 communicating. I think it takes out that communication barrier, or the, you know what I mean. It wants us to it takes out that communication, or thinks that you know we have to fight it with aggression rather than communication. And right. then probably say, you know it when I say synonymous, just in, again, kind of just us not understanding even our culture, you know, within, you know, our race, you know what I mean? And understanding all different types of, you know, different nationalities and, you know, where just, I mean, just, just, just everything from religion, like beliefs to, you know, just everything you know what i mean i think just yeah i mean i could that that can go deep but i think all of that combined you know what i'm saying uh are just those misconceptions that you know stop us you know what i mean from helping ourselves we canard man thank you for pulling up in our safe space and being vulnerable with us man uh, we got deep on, on, on just friendship and everything. And, man, thank you for your insight, brother. We proud of you. We love you. Uh, and can't wait to hang you on here again. Man, I love y'all boys, man. I just appreciate the space, man. I really do, man. Let's do it again, man. Y'all know I'm down. Absolutely. Absolutely. Let's get it!